Lost Lands this weekend, man. How was it? Unreal. Mastodon, m- new name, Maruda. Freaking fire, flames. First time I was out there in front of a whole crowd like that, it was, it was pretty incredible. Dude, I, I got this one raw shot that uh, you'll see it if you're on my Instagram. And it's got the flames going up. And I, after I took the shot, I turned around. There was, like, people sitting down. I was like, yo, that was fucking sick. <laughs> I was so amped up. In real time, just like, yo, guys, just so you know, <laughs> that was fucking awesome. No, it was so cool. I do that at work all the time. I'll hit enter on the thing, and I'll look back at Jeremy. Like, yo, that was fucking dope. <laughs> it was I, it, it's such a big adrenaline rush. My tongue just falls out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm never psyched. You look at me like. It's very unnatural, but it just—I mean, it is natural. <laughs> you fucking goofy, the dog. What do you mean your tongue just comes out? If I get stoked, if you know that I'm stoked, it's kind of—it's like, <laughs> very subtle. It just happens. All right, here we go. Hello, and welcome back to On the Rail, the number one EDM podcast on the line, like online, but on the line. It's pun, kind of. Okay. It is October first, and today. We are talking Lost Lands, we're talking Kanye, and we're talking the latest EDM news in our Beats of the Week. My name is Victor, a.k.a. Victor the Fourth. This is Vince, and that is Blake. This past weekend, Lost Lands, my first festival, being up there, and also being All Access. It was your first All Access? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it. when I say it was my first All Access, like I've been All Access, but it was my first festival where it's like, all access. It's a really big festival, and I go back and I'm in the artist lounge and everything. And it was I, it was a cool experience. I felt like I didn't belong there for a little bit. It was like it was so weird. It was weird seeing like the these massive DJs that like I you only hear on the radio, and then to be right next to them in the same spot as them. What like about spring? It spring I was too, but it was different. It w- the area was different. It was like up in a uh like kind of in a in a stadium yeah where there is a bunch of boxes and so everyone had like rooms inside the boxes and there wasn't really a, c- a communal area to hang out in and there even though there kind of was there wasn't a lot of artists hanging out in there because everyone it was far away from the stage and i was shooting like the entire time i was there so it was just completely different um, same, same, but different. Same, same, but different. So it, like, yeah, I kind of had that, but it didn't feel as real as Lost Lands. I mean, Lost Lands, they just do an incredible job making it such an immersive experience, not only for the artists, but for the, or not only for the guests, but, f- like, for the artists, too. Like, they just, Excision, Jeff, does just such a great job of putting on the festival, and production's just next level, so... For all the headbangers, all it the rail awesome. riders out there, definitely suggest going to it. It looked awesome. It looked like there yeah. was one billion people there for some reason. Yeah, I mean, 35,000 people. Holy I mean, shit. That's, that's, that's a, a lot, lot of, of fucking people. people. It's a lot of people. Who were, like, the best? I mean, I guess you were filming a lot. Who were The one set I really saw was Excision and Elenium set, back-to-back. It was the last set on Sunday night. I had nothing going on, so I was like... I was editing a little bit before that in the last two days, and it was just like, it was the last. No, it looked like there were a lot of awesome, awesome clips that I've seen that came out from the Excision Alinea. It was really including incredible. Including some new tracks that aren't out yet. It looked yeah. awesome. The 35 la- grand, that's, that's like that's like the United Center. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably. Like, right, like, for sure, like the United Center. Or like the G-Spot. Yeah, like Wrigley. Right? Wrigley's about 40. Wrigley's 42. 42, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's that many people. It honestly seems like more people, though. Like, thinking of, like, Wrigley in one area, I don't know. It seemed like there was more people than that. It yeah. it was just mass amounts of people. So, it was really cool. Uh, how was Kanye? Oh. oh, Kanye West, yeah. It was uh, funny you asked. Thought we weren't going to bring that up. <laughs> kind of a small <laughs> deal. No, so I went to the Kanye listening party on Saturday night. Not a big deal. Um, it was un. It was unbelievable. It was so cool. The line was insane. So I got there two and a half hours early after I got my tickets, and the line was. I was at the Auditorium Theater on Michigan a- Auditorium Theater on Michigan Avenue. Line was around the block, like all the way like down Michigan Avenue. I was probably like, I was two and a half hours early. I was probably the hundred and thirtieth person in line. So it was a pretty healthy line the whole time. People are interviewing people in line. 
people were like taking photos, videos. Some guy offered me five hundred dollars for my spot in line, which I was like, dude, God damn. I was like, dude, what do you mean for my spot in line? Like, what do you mean? Like, I would get out of line, go to the back, you give me five hundred dollars. Why wouldn't I just take your five hundred dollars, let you cut me? What are you gonna pay everyone five hundred dollars? It made no sense to me. Did you did you do it? No, because I didn't, I don't want to anger the line around me. And then I got this guy's five hundred dollars, and then like I, fuck it, dude. I don't know. It was so Money weird. Moves. He was with us. You know. You know. Honestly, why I didn't do it? Because he approached me like this. I was standing. There, he goes, "Hey, I'll give you three hundred dollars for your spot in line. Don't fucking touch me. Don't bro me if you don't know me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get fuck that, that guy. Yeah. Uh, so, anyways, yeah. So, anyways, you go in. It was late by like an hour because he went to the Chance concert. We go in. Yonder pouch for the bag right away. Uh, airdropped some cool pictures, and I was like, holy shit, let's go. They had tons of merch. It sold out before I could buy any. They're throwing merch to people in the crowd. Like, everyone fills in this giant stadium. You know, it fit 4,000 people. There was probably only 2,000 people there. And so we're sitting there, and it's silent. It's dark. There's not a screen on. Like, it's totally quiet. And all of a sudden, you just hear, like, a little, bet, bet, bet. Do you guys, hey, you guys excited to be here? Everyone was like, yeah. It's like, do you guys want to meet my dad? We were like, yeah. So, like, his kid was on the mic. And uh, he comes out, and Kim comes out, North, Saint, they come out, hyping everyone up. Didn't come out onto the stage, though. Uh, so the place was about half full, so they must have sold only, like, only sold 2,000 tickets or whatever. Place was not full. He was on the side little viewing box, not the higher level, the lower level one. <laughs> and so he was within reaching of everyone on the right side. Of the yeah. like you could touch him. Kanye also has the longest, the biggest arms, longest arms on the entire planet. Just a side note. And so he comes out, he's like, let's go. Like, he's hyping the crowd up. Everyone's so excited. He plays the intro to his, he has two documentaries coming out. One about his work on building, like, sustainable housing or whatever. I don't know what the hell that's all about, but whatever. The other one was about, uh, he has a movie coming out called Jesus is King, which is essentially, he played, like, 30 minutes of it. It's just, like, a half-hour long music video. You're talking a lot of Kanye. It's like. All right. Music video for a, a lot, Sunday service. shit that only hype beasts are, no. <laughs> it so then he played the whole album. He played Jesus is King. Yeah. It was unbelievable. There were a couple points where it almost turned into a riot. I almost took my shirt <laughs> off. It was absolutely insane. The album is so good. It sounded unfinished, so I wouldn't expect it to come out anytime soon. But it was incredible just having Kanye rapping, playing beats, playing different versions of the same song. The crowd was going absolutely nuts. Seeing Kim in person, who is unbelievable. Like It was just an incredible experience. Blake I'll literally never looks like he wants to I'm just himself. murdering Blake with my words right now. That was the first time Vince told me all about it. I should have been there. I wasn't there. I was in the weight room to buy it online. At one point, there were 600 people in front of me. I refreshed. It was sold out. Apparently, it sits 4,000 people. Vince just said only 2,000 people went. I should have been there. I wasn't there. I would have paid all the monies in the world to go. Vince took his little brother. It's very cute of him. I hate him. It's grope. I love Vince. He's my friend, but I don't like him right now. <laughs> Do there other topics you guys want to talk about? Because <laughs> I don't want to hear any more yeah, about Yeah, glad, glad Kanye went great, but... Damn, when you speak like that, it literally sounds like a different language. I'm, I'm like, poor because I spent all my money on merch. Literally saying I'm poor. I spent all my money. It literally on merch. doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's so sick, guys. It was so sick. <laughs> all right, here we go. DJ Duo Yellow Claw pays for longtime fans' wedding, then features the couple in the new music video. The new music video that came out, very well made, very beautiful. It's a great story. It has the couple getting engaged, then uh, them getting married. Yellow Claw paid for the whole wedding. Looks like you have a take on it. Love's not real. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, so I read the article. They were like yeah. boys beforehand. Like they had known each other before a music video was made. Yeah. Like he was just some super fan in New York, right? Oh yeah. And yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. Yo, I just love. I mean, you guys. dude's got his tat, yellow claw tattoo. They show his room. It's got yellow claw flags. What like, a wild thing everything. to be a super fan of. Yellow Claw. Yeah, dude, dude. I fucking love Yellow Claw. I'm gonna get married there. Like, there was people who got but married like at halftime in the Bills Mafia game. Like, for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. I get that. You're a diehard Bills fan. Maybe play but for But I the mean, like, you go, you go to a Yellow Claw show, like, you meet a girl. Yellow, like, that you know what I mean? Sense. It's like, same thing. Yeah, going there's to a Bills game or a Cubs game. Meeting a girl at a Cubs game. You're like, oh, I'd like, then yeah. you get married at, like, you're, you get engaged at a Cubs game. Like, like it's all tied in. Like, yeah. there's such a bias in your head. It's that all gets rewired where it's like, you meet a person or you have a great experience and you tie it to a song. And then right. every time you hear that song, it refreshes that experience in your brain. So it's for this guy, solid. clearly these Amsterdam DJs yeah. and what, whatever. How many songs do they have? Ten? 
Maybe no I'm married play. I know, I know. But I, Bro, like, they were so old, they got a lot of songs. I know, I know, I know. Ten good ones. But it was really cool to see them incorporate <laughs> their fans into the music video. I love stuff like that. I'm yeah. the biggest fan of music videos on the entire 100%. planet. I wish MTV would bring music videos back, so I'm all for more theatrics around music videos. Yeah, anytime fans get tied in with music videos or like any, anything like that, and the artists are including fans, it's, it's always a great look, positive for bo- both sides. Be a shame if they got divorced. <laughs> Would be a shame. I was Who actually thinking about. What that. artists are you gonna ask to do your wedding slash music video? I don't know if I could fucking get into a Kanye show one time. It'd be pretty <laughs> sick. Or maybe my boy would be like, "Hey, I found these tickets on Twitter. I got one for my brother. Do you want one? Or do you want me to send you this guy's DM?" I'd be like, "Sure." But until then, love's not real. <laughs> Shout out Van Man sixty nine for the tickets. <laughs> was that his name? Van Man sixty nine. He Band gave you the man? tickets? Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Bandman69, a.k.a. Josh Weber, 3 at Venmo. New study reveals that the average cost of a night out is what? Guess. It was like 87 bucks, wasn't it? $87. You believe that? Do you spend $87 when you go Not out? Not when we go out. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, not when we go out. Big flex. <laughs> <laughs> no, the tip's I, usually 80 in the box. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. I mean, like, uh, I, I'd say... What an yeah. asshole thing to say. <laughs> I was like, don't go out. Uh, yeah, that sounds... I mean, it's honestly, that sounds a little it's low to me. Low? Dude, when you... Oh, at, I thought... Well, think about all in, right? Like, if, if it's a night out... I guess it's different. If it's a date, that seems low. If it's a night out, it seems high. All right, well, let's say we're going to Concord. We're going to Concord for a show. Tickets, 40 bucks. Right. We're gonna pregame here though. Pregame here, we buy a bottle. Bottle is like twenty five dollars. So twelve bucks. Maybe maybe thirty dollars. Yeah. Split split between three. So we're at so we're at fifty. So we split between three people though. It's about ten. Plus yeah, yeah, the yeah. ticket. All right, all right, all right. So yeah, yeah, fifty plus Uber. It's like ten dollars per person maybe. Yeah. Sixty. A couple drinks at maybe. the show. Yeah. Yeah, that get you get say eighty bucks real yeah. quick. Even if it's not talking about that's concerts, true, just true. regular night out. It seems like if we were going to Benchmark or something, that seems a bit high for that. Like I'm not yeah. gonna buy ten drinks at Benchmark. But hey, if bro, we're talking if about like dates, night, you will. if we're talking about like dates, that's very girl, low. So you're low. Girl drinks. Well, yeah, date. Well, we're talking about dates. That adds up. If there's girls involved, eighty six is incredibly low. But I guess there's the whole middle of the country where everything is free ninety nine. So eighty seven for the night out. <laughs> 60 bucks for the day after pill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to average those costs in over the course of a couple of years, Blake. That's really true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. but that seems about right. <laughs> <laughs> we should start buying tickets in bulk and reselling them. It's not topic for pod, but just a thought that I wanted to have on the record. I like that. Good, it's a good idea. I mean, it's so easy. It's such an easy thing. So fucking they, easy. Especially Concord tickets, they always sell out, so it's like... Um, Learning Python, we'll figure it out. The MDMA come down. It's something that I believe is a myth. I personally don't think that the MDMA come down is real. And this sociotherapist agrees with me. He says that the MDMA come down is not a real thing. He says that if you are taking pure MDMA, not a lot of people have that. There is, there should be no come down. But the come down comes from the lack of sleep, lack of hydration, all these other things that fuck with your head. Maybe you are taking MDMA that also has other shit in it. Very high possibility. I mean, people put shit in MDMA. You, you never know what you're really getting. But I thought it was interesting when this came out because uh, I totally, like, I, I agree with the guy. Not saying I've ever... Who could relate? Here was the thing, though. When I first saw the topic yeah. that you kicked it over, it was like, oh, guy says MDMA come down is not real. I was like, all right. Yeah. Where did he say this? Harvard study? But no, his fucking Twitter. This guy was just <laughs> online one day like, yo, MDMA come down ain't real. I'm living it right now. It's not real. Like, what do you mean? It wasn't legit. It's just some guy, but I don't <laughs> think it's real. Yeah, hey, I believe him. <laughs> his, his, name, <laughs> his name is Dr. Ben Sessa. 
He's got an MD. Oh, the MD is in his Twitter bio. Do it's you have his it, degree? Yeah, I, it's in his Twitter bio. You oh. can't lie if it's in your Twitter bio. <laughs> Do you remember if I say Victor, the fourth videographer in my Twitter bio, you know I'm a videographer. Do you remember <coughs> our vice principal? We won't say her name. Do you remember our vice principal in middle school? She was a doctor. Do you no. know why she was a doctor? Because she studied the violin for seven years. <laughs> All right? And if she went on Insta, if she went on fucking Insta or Twitter and was like, hey bro, that here, MDMA shit, that ain't nothing. Thing. That ain't nothing. This guy with also says. With a says, proper hashtag, it's fine. This doctor also says, best dosing recreationally, talking about MDMA, <laughs> is to take... On the T-drop, right when you drop it, 125 milligrams. N- not over. 101.25 points. And then after two hours, take another 60 milligrams. And then if you're going to do it again, wait another two hours, take 30 milligrams, and then another two hours, 15 milligrams, and then another two hours. Get the fuck off. That's Let me paint you a picture. Imagine you're at... I don't think <laughs> anyone is doing that. Yeah, imagine... I don't think anyone is doing imagine that. Imagine at your favorite concert, your front row, on the rail, we'll <laughs> say. It's your favorite show. You're with your wife. It's Yellow Claw. On the fucking rail. <laughs> <laughs> you're just hanging out, and you're like, I'd really love some MDMA right now. Let me grab my scale. <laughs> you got the digi scale? No, better yet. Like, you have the Monday through Friday pill counter. And <laughs> for each, like, half hour, you just have, like, the perfect amount measured. Like, Tuesday? Wednesday? Okay. That's actually a good uh, idea. MDMA. Please take responsibly. <laughs> Man dies following Is this posts? guy an MDA salesperson? He's like, all right, you need to take it five times a day. These doses. Sounds like an inside job. <laughs> Thanks for cutting me off mid-topic Sorry. change. I don't Here we go. Him. Man dies following post Imagine Music Festival police altercation. So this guy died after being tased by three police officers as he exited Imagine Music Festival. Don't tase me, bro. I mean, they don't say what the guy was doing, but I mean, to get tased three times, he probably got to be on uh, a lot of drugs. They said he uh, was like walking around naked, yeah, and they drugs. told him like, shut up. And then he, like, got aggressive or something. And then they're checking, like, the body cam footage from the police officers. I mean, getting tased three times has got to suck. I mean, it'll, <laughs> it'll fuck your heart hurt. up. Especially if you're on MDMA yep. and you're geeking yep. out. Can't be fun. Don't get tased. Don't do shit to get tased. Keep yeah. your pants on. At some fe- Where it, was the festival it, at? It, if you're having a good time, though, like, you're on a little acid. You're on a little mile. Take this guy, yeah, off. get a little wild. He just wasn't taking the proper dose of MDMA. Someone sent him that tweet. <laughs> you don't get aggressive on on those <laughs> that drugs. That is true. You get naked and you you want to roll around and rub. You don't want to fight. Yeah. So what do you think he was on bath salts? Dude, maybe. Dude, bath salts are gnarly. I got punched in the face. <laughs> Go I on. Get on bath salts one time. That uh, for real story, true story. Really, just Whatever. swung on you, dude. I. Tangent, we're going on a tangent right here. So, yeah, four years ago on a trip to Colorado when I was in college, I was on this bus and we were partying, drinking. It's an 18-hour bus ride. And I'm blacked out, blacked the fuck out, back of the bus. <laughs> I remember hanging out with this kid earlier in the day, but I don't remember any of this happening because I was blacked out. So this is all told to me. So I'm walking off the bus and we stopped at a gas station and this kid and everyone's like off of it, off of the bus pretty much, except like me and like s- uh, the people in the back. So this kid literally for no reason just turns around, punches me square in the face. <laughs> literally, the, like everyone who was around me was like, yo, you didn't do anything. The dude just literally turned around, squared up to you. Punched you right in the face. <laughs> and then me being the psychopath that I am was like, I will fucking kill you. I will fucking kill you. And I'm trying to grab this guy's shirt. I'm ripping his shirt. And I'm so <laughs> fucked up. I'm trying to, like, punch him. But I'm throwing my hand over. And it's hitting the top of the bus. So I, like, <laughs> I keep punching the top of the bus trying to hit this kid. This kid, I ripped this kid's shirt off trying to kill him. This kid runs off the bus. He starts running around outside the bus. Some One of my friends, like, grabs me because I'm, like, trying to go after him. And I was like, dude, you, you, like, stay right here. I'm like, I'm going to fucking kill him. I'm going to fucking kill him. <laughs> going insane. The dude's running around outside. Another kid that was on the bus tries to go up to him and, like, 
like grab him. The dude's running around like through this car wash. The dude tries to grab him. The guy in bath salts tries swinging. The guy misses, and the dude punches him in the face, knocks him out on the ground. This guy's the dude's girlfriend who is on bath salts comes over, and was like, "Oh my god!" The dude on bath salts starts to try to get up. The girlfriend starts covering <laughs> his mouth. His mouth and his nose to pass him out. Like, like stay on the ground, stay on the ground. This dude is like freaking out. <laughs> I like haven't been able to say anything. This is a true story. Literally, it is insane. He was so trying the to cops kill him. come. The cops come. The cops get there. The cops take this kid to the hospital. This kid doesn't recognize himself, doesn't recognize his ID. His dad gets to the hospital, doesn't recognize his dad. They take his blood, find out he had bath salts in him. The story was that, like, he went into the bathroom when he was fucked up on drugs, or fu- fucked up, like, from drinking, tried to do cocaine, and I, on accident did bath salts. So then he was on the bus, and we were getting off, and he obviously, I don't know. It was, it was The entire thing is fucking crazy. I was... I was bleeding. It was it was fucked up, man. Imagine dating someone that takes bath salts. <laughs> and it being a regular occurrence. She was like, "Don't worry, this happens, this all, happens the all the time. <laughs> he's just gonna he's gonna go limp soon." Oh my that god! All, it sounded like prison rules. Like he was just <laughs> he found the biggest guy and was like, "I'm gonna fight him." Like, it what size shoe do you wear? War size, bitch. Like, like that's how it started. It's insane. It was just insane. I'll just it suffocate him real quick. <laughs> That was that was probably one of the craziest things that's ever like randomly happened to me. Just getting punched in the face by someone wow. with bath salts. Yeah, that's insane. So end tangent. Back to the news. Uh, this is we're Sheesh. gonna end the news on a good note. Uh, Positivity, in, guys. <laughs> Insomniac events donates <laughs> EDC camping tents to shelter Hurricane Dorian victims. So if you have ever seen this, sh- the camping tents, they're they're nice. I mean, yeah. This is just a really great thing that Insomniac yeah, did. Yeah, you know what? They didn't have to do this. I mean, this is something that, um, just they they were doing it out of the kindness of their hearts, obviously. It's, it's just you know cool. what? Another another positive story from the EDM community. All positivity, donations, mental health, all that. It's all great stuff. I'll it's tell so you what. Re- you don't see reassuring. anyone from Firefest donating. I agree. That's what I'm saying. I mean, like, with all those tents, it looks like fucking Firefest. I have a That's theory <laughs> about Bass Nectar. I thought about this yeah. with all the nice shit he's been doing. He for sure got dumped by some chick and was like, you think I'm an asshole? You think I'm a bad guy? Fine. Watch this. Mental health for all you motherfuckers. All right, she loved the environment. <laughs> Climate change is real. He's just trying to, like, he's a great guy. I love what you're doing, yeah. Bass Nectar. Keep it up. But he's like, oh, yeah, she thinks I'm a dick? Watch, fucking, fucking, watch this! You think I'm a dick? Watch this! Like, something's going on. No one's that nice for yeah. no good reason. Are the tents nice? I was thinking about staying in a tent for Coachella, Dude, and, like, on the lake. These look super nice. I mean, like, those those are glamping, but these tents, they yeah, got I'm air here conditioning to glamp. in them. They are shielded from the sun. I mean, like, have I want to stay in one Have you seen tents. the Coachella tents, though? Are they good? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the t- Coachella tents, yeah. They're these look nice like level. they're from, like, NASA. They do look I like I want to just like lay stuff. out limbs on linguini and just chill. I like that. All right. I'm in on tents. Here we go with uh, the beats of the week. This is baggage. Okay, before this uh, intro, this song, Griffin's on fire. His set was one of the best sets I've seen all year. Lol, Palooza. It's called Baggage, brand new single. Uh, my announcement is is officially Sad Boy Fall. All my songs going forward until winter will be emotional, sad. Fall is for lovers. Autumn is for lovers. Everyone knows that. So prepare for a lot of sad boy, lovey-dovey fall songs. Fire up the Fleetwood Mac when you're not listening to house music. Blake's in love and now he's tweaking. It's fad, sad boy fall. I'm stealing it from Blake. Yeah, sad boy fall is my thing. It's for cigarettes and turtlenecks and books and poetry. And Donnie Darko. The Lumineers just put out a new album. It is so sad boy fall. Lattes and Fleetwood Mac walking the dog on Saturdays. Griffin. I feel like he's been on our queue for like the last three weeks. He's on fire. Oh, huge fan. So good. That's a really good song. Alright, next up we got Galantis. 
Holy Water. That song fucks. It's a good one. It's stupid. I mean, it's that classic bubbly Galantis vibe. I can't get down. Just good vibes the whole time. I'm Summer in the fall. That's what they're doing. Yo, shout out James Owen. My boy did some video work for Galantis a few months ago. Shocked that I'm at uh, Spur and Awakening. Boy. It's not sad boy music, but hey, look yeah, at you guys. It's got cuffing season vibes to it. Big time cuffing season. Big time. Go spend $87 tonight and dance with your lady. More than 87 please. That auto nose song with like ee, 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 ee. I love it. It's a great pregame song. This is the first song you play when the girls come over for the pregame. It's a great song. Ten forty five song. Ten forty five. Oh yeah, right before? Yes. I like it. Yes. The moment before it starts. <laughs> Next song we got Feel So by Zed's Dead and Funk and Matt. Zed's Dead, baby, Zed's Dead. Um, I like this. I'll sound like an old guy. It just reminds me of Dead Mouse a lot. I dig it. Love me some Dead Mouse. And it's just fire. Zed's Dead, still probably one of my favorite names in EDM. And Song Holo is a great name, too. <laughs> Zed's Dead this weekend at Lost Lands freaking Slade again. It was my third time seeing him this summer. EDC, E Forest. Now Lost Lands, he's just ah, uh, they're the they're the best. I was standing right next to them, <laughs> in the artist. Oh the really? Area. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh my god, that, that's dead. I was like, I'm such a loser. <laughs> Their sets are so so good. I haven't seen them in a long time. Like I see them every year at least. At uh, Lala. I don't remember. Hell yeah. Solid song. Just a maze runner shit. You could tell definitely that like the summertime sound for new music is over. There's no more summertime. Everything's like club music, not festival pool party music. It's super noticeable. Way grimier, way lower. A lot more bass, a lot more drum, no synth, no piano. It's exciting. And to bring us to another one like that, we have Be Fine by E. Cali. Also in the sad boy, maybe relationship, maybe get your heart broken this October. Who knows? Definitely in the category. Cali with a slow song. Wafia from Louis the Child fame. Who we're seeing in November. Don't forget. You got any tickets for that, bud? I'm gonna do a call back to the Kanye thing. It's been over Forty bucks. Cop that. What? Six tickets. Yeah, we got six. We're all trying to do a plus one. It's definitely sad boy. This song, yeah. This is like I maybe I should break up with him. Song. Damn. Good song by E. Kelly. Such a vibe. Yes, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't really put out songs like this. I know. It's vibe. Man. It's a vibe and a half. Well, it's Sad Boy Fall. He knows. All right, here we go. Next song. My pick of the week. Vix Picks. High Hopes by Panic at the Disco. Under Lux. Remix. Here we go. Yo, this song, bro. Just wait, <laughs> bro. Literally, just wait. I I haven't heard a remix like this of an old song in a minute. It, 
hook it up. Oh, Jesus, Murphy. <laughs> How, how interesting. What a turn. Right? I was like, that is too good. That was not expected. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Another remix. This is Post Malone's I'm Gonna Be by B K B K B K B K Remix. Did you guys see that picture of Post Malone over the weekend with that girl flashing him at his show? No. Oh, that's awesome, dude. It's some girl flashing him and he's just like... <laughs> tongue out. It's fucking hilarious. That's amazing. Super high quality. Because I'm not on SoundCloud, I feel like I miss out on a lot of remixes. Putting that out there. Remix game. All my songs this week were remixes. Isn't this nice? Let's go to town. Fuck it. Right now. The only thing about like Tao or like any club, a lot of old guys. You don't hear new music. No, not at all. Good pick, right? I like you. Nice. Adam, what was your favorite pick? He said he Akali. A Kali. You don't like a High Hopes remix? Damn. Yeah, Fuck. No, feel. cut that. He didn't say Galantis. A Kali. Alright, this song. is a bonus song. Bonus song? I couldn't not pick this song, but I really wanted to pick the other song. So this oh, song yo, is Yo, I almost picked this. Seven yo. Lines, Slander and Dabin. Yo. The first time featuring Dylan Matthew, but this is the nightmare remix. So, yes, yes. I mean this is five amazing artists collaborating. Collaborating. Yo, I fucking forgot to pick life. this fucking song. I, I couldn't not. I almost picked it last week. It's such a great song. I've been scooped. I, I slander and spaghetti and uh, spag Hetty. <laughs> yes, but that's his name, Spag Eddie. That might be one of my favorite ones. <laughs> slander and spaghetti went back to back. <laughs> Are you saying spaghetti? Why do you keep stopping? Spag Hetty. <laughs> went spa spaghetti. <laughs> you, fuck you. Went back to back this weekend at Lost Lands. And they played the song, and it was just, it's just an awesome, incredible song. I was going to pick this song. Fuck, I'm so mad. Before the after Closer. party, last song you play. It gets you in the feels, but it still keeps it moving. Wow. I'm so mad I forgot that. Yeah. It's good shit. Good picks of the week, boys. That was really, really good. Any other new releases that have come out? I know that there was the uh, there was the tribute to like Fleetwood Mac. A lot of people got on there. Tame was on there. Yeah. M80, uh, not M83. MGMT was on there. Again, Sad Boy Fall, Lumineer's new album, if you want to cry. <laughs> it's Sad Boy Fall, baby. Go watch Donnie Darko. Relax. Read a book. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Zed came out with a new song. Fucking sucks. Don't waste your time. Also a Sad Boy song. I'm trying to think of anything else that was new. Uh, there's some new Slander. There's new Nightmare. Soul of King. 
Yeah, yeah there's new excision on the 11th. Um, some new, there's a lot of stuff coming out in the fall. People are gearing up for their winter tours, so a lot of new music. I mean, it's the best. Uh, Tiesto's new song, God is a Dancer. I like it, but it's more of a summer song that he released in October, so kind of weird. Or September. All right, well, here we go. Do you have anything else? Yeah, put out the album, Kanye. You too, Tame. I don't think I forgot about you. Put two out fucking singles out at the start of the summer. Nothing happened after that. Come on, come on. Shout out Adam, shout out Tame Impala. Also, the Kanye album is out. It's just in here. This is Yellow Claws, Let's Get Married. The song that the music video is made for a couple. And uh, this song is going to play us out today, but... Thank you so much for watching, for tuning in, for listening. If you made it this far. Hit me up on Instagram at Victor the Fourth. Tell me what you thought. Say something in the comments. Tell us that you liked it. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. To all my rail riders out there, thank you. you guys, you got any last comments? Sad boy fall, baby. Sad boy fall. Here we go. Peace out. I wasn't so ready. Don't be so bitter. I know I keep feeling. Made your heart too heavy. Hop on the jet, let me change the settings. Your presence a blessing. I know you're tired, you're feeling the pressure. Well, let me correct you. You gotta be wise. They put the cap with the lies.